the execution time will be longer if an exception is created. Deterministic multiplexing has the PDRAP access patterns by first fetching the code and data to a staging page before executing the secret code. Uh, now let's, uh, now let's look at these differences. The first two differences work by detecting the page faults or exceptions inside the e -play. And the third difference is designed uh, against an attacker that learns page level access patterns. With all these differences, we motivated our work to answer the question, uh, are these differences sufficient to protect the e -play from leaking such kind of information? We uh, cannot answer this question without a systematic understanding of SDX subchannels. In this work, book, we make the first step uh, 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 towards the uh, memory uh, subchannels. We presented a comprehensive survey into the subchannels within SDX memory management, and we identified eight attack vectors. The second part with uh, as the several uh, differences are uh, designed to detect pitfalls or exceptions, we propose a new type of attacks that reduces the AX induced by the attack, which can uh, bypass existing defenses. Uh, third, we designed an attack with finer grained special granularity to show that hiding paper level access patterns may not be sufficient to prevent the information Uh, to understand the attack services with SDX memory management, let's consider a simple model of a memory reference. A memory reference begins with the address translation to get the physical address. The translation will either hit the translation local sound platform or goes through a pitch table walk. Uh, after the physical address is known, the data is fetched from the CPU cache or from the main memory. Looking at this picture, uh, our first question is what resources are shared between an e and the other processes that an open system, the open system may have control? Uh, these are what we define as attack vectors. In our work, we um, identified uh, five shared resources. This includes the trans lo translation local sub buffer, the cache, a page table entry, and the DRAP. We identified eight attack vectors. As far as we know, this vector uh, cover all the steps during your memory reference and represents a comprehensive understanding of FTX memory attack surface. Uh, some of these are known vectors, uh, such as uh, vector 6, uh, the open system's ability to trigger pay faults, and uh, vector 7 and vector 8 and uh, share the CPU caches and DRAM group buffers. Uh, so um, I will spend a bit a little more time on the other vectors. The first one is the uh, shared TLB interface when hub threading is enabled. Uh, hub threading supports two hardware threads running at the same time inside the same protocol. We find that uh, the TLB interface can be uh, dynamically partitioned between uh, two hub threads. Uh, that said, uh, if one module core consumes more TLB interest, uh, some TLB interest of the other hub threads may be uh, directed. As a result, uh, a TLB prime probe attack is possible with an uh, attack variable. Uh, according to the manual, upon a content switch, uh, only the PTE interest uh, of the current thread are flushed. Uh, as a result, a TLB um, prime probe attack may also work without the concern. The third factor is that the reference uh, page table inputs are cached as normal data, uh, so, uh, and this is under the open space, is outside the EPC and is under the control of the open system. So a flash reload attack on the page table inputs can be used to infer whether a table, page table input of an EPC page is in the cache. Vector, uh, vectors 4 and 5 are due to the fact that uh, the index activities will update the pitch table input. 
uh, as the existing defenses against FTX side panels are designed, uh, several of these defenses are designed to be detect pitfalls or exceptions. Uh, so a natural question uh, is raised. Um, can we make the pitch level attack stealthy by reducing uh, the AX induced by the attack? Uh, now we look closer at vector 4. We know that uh, the pitch tables are under the control of the open system. According to the menu, each time a pitch table walk is performed, the access flag of a pitch table interest will be set. So uh, an attacker can learn the pitch accesses by clearing and monitoring the access flags of the pitch table interest. However, uh, after the first pitch table walk is performed, uh, the translation is brought into the translation local sound buffer. The falling relate to the same page may not be observed. So uh, to make this attack efficient, the attack needs to additionally flash the help interest. This can be done by uh, sending interprocessor interrupts to the input thread. We call such an attack the basic sneaky page monitoring attack. We uh, evaluated the effectiveness of basic attack on conspel. Uh, the basic attack uh, has uh, comparable effectiveness with the pitfall attack, and uh, the slowdown uh, induced by the attack is brought down from over uh, 1,000 for the pitfall attack and uh, to only 5 for the basic attack. Uh, when frequent accesses to a same pit, um, need to be observed. The basic attack is to uh, interrupt the input threat from time to time to flash the self interest. Uh, timing enhanced STM attack uh, can work better in this scenario. The attacker measures the timing signal between two monitored pages to infer the control flow between these two pages. The attack can be further enhanced by monitoring a set of such pairs of pages. And uh, the observations can form a classifier to be used to uh, infer some closer observation of an interface control flow. The evaluation on free time shows that the timing enhanced SPM attack significantly uh, brings down the overhead induced, uh, induced by the attack from over 200 for pitch force attack to only 16% for the tiny constant SPM. Now uh, we have asked ourselves uh, one more question. Um, can the side effects be further reduced? Uh, to further reduce the number of EX, uh, we look at the first attack vector. An interrupt free method can be used from a uh, Collocated logic call to force a page table walk. The idea is that on our test bed, we found that the theta TLB and the L2 TLB interest are dynamically partitioned between two half threads. We can have uh, an attack thread on the collocated logic call to flush the enclosed thread TLB interest to force a page table walk. We call this attack uh, an uh, half thread enhancement. A sneaky pit monitoring attack. To uh, evaluate the effectiveness of these attacks, we monitor three versions of pit level attacks on the EDDSA sending algorithm. Uh, we can see that uh, the pit fault attack needs to trigger over uh, 70,000 interrupts. The basic uh, STM attack needs to trigger about 33,000 interrupts. Um, while this basic attack already reduces the AX count by half. The timing enhanced uh, SPM attack only triggers about 1,300 uh, interrupts. Considering that uh, normal execution of uh, the EDDSH training algorithm without attack in our test, on our test bag also uh, has over 1,500 AX, we believe this uh, timing enhanced SPM attack is almost invisible to the AX-based detection method. Uh, the last part of our work is to understand 
whether uh, putting the secret code and data within a same page uh, can eliminate, eliminate the, attack, uh, the attack surface. They want to know whether the final current observation can be achieved. They begin with verifying two known vectors. The first one is the catch side channel. As the catch line in EPC pages are not shared with other processes, the flash load attack that has uh, 64 bytes granularity does not work on SDX. On our platform, the special granularity of the prime probe catch attack is 16 uh, kilobytes. The drama attack works on a program with a large memory footprint. Otherwise, uh, to force the memory access with the DRAM, for example, by setting the catch visible bit, will bring plastic slow down to the program and uh, bring also a lot of noise. In our work, we combine uh, the cache and DRAM attack to achieve final current obduration with only a little noise and small overhead. The basic idea is that we use a cache probing thread frequently filling a cache set to force the memory access to reach the DRAM. We use another thread to perform a DRAM to buffer based sub channel attack, uh, and a real hit can be observed if a target address sharing the both the same cache sets and the same DRAM row is accessed. In this way, we find that this attack can have 64 bytes granularity. However, uh, DRAM rows are only shared uh, among um, inclaves. As a result, the DRAM row buffer side assign channel attack can only be mounted inside a spying inclave. What's missing uh, in the spying inclave is a high resolution um, clock. We solve this problem by um, uh, making use of a uh, SDX feature that the inclave can access the non etc page directly without any delay. So we pass the time counter into the inclave using a shared memory address. The evaluation shows that the attack achieves about 50% detection rate and uh, low force detection rate. What's the mentioning uh, is that the attack inclave, the spine inclave, can be a debugging inclave. As a debugging inclave uh, can also share a DRAM row with the inclave, with the victim inclave. Furthermore, um, on STX v2, uh, we believe that the attack can have better efficiency. Uh, as um, according to the Intel menu, a high resolution timer will be spotted inside inclave. Uh, here is a brief uh, summary of these attack vectors. We found that the SPM attack can achieve 4 kilobytes granularity with modest side effects. The cache DRAM attack has 64 bytes granularity and a small side effect. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we make the following conclusions. We presented a comprehensive analysis of the SDX memory side channels. We identified eight factors that could be used to infer the secret inside the inclave. Looking again at the attack surface, one may wonder, uh, are these the only attack vectors? The answer is uh, uh, probably no. Uh, due to this uh, simple model of SDX, we believe there can be more attack vectors if we look closer into the implement implementation of SDX. The second part of our work is that we developed new attacks based on these vectors to reduce the number of AEX and the bypass existing AEX based detections. We show that interrupts are not necessary to import the information within the inclave. Third, uh, we use hash DRAM attack to achieve final current observation into the inclave execution. One thing uh, we learned from this work is that multiple uh, attack vectors uh, can be combined to compensate each other. For example, using hamstering uh, based Kelvin flashing to enhance the 
a skill attack, and use the cache priming to enhance the DRAM attack. About the defenses, uh, we think that it is uh, difficult to close all these set channels. Closing all these set channels will make the design of SDX too complex to be used and analyzed. The hint to the developer is to think about how to use SDX secure. What kind of computation is really needed to be protected? Putting a large amount of code inside Enclave is not a brilliant choice, as a small code base is meant to be easier to be protected. To the system designers, considering uh, defenses against only one single vector is not enough. The attack may choose another way around, which may be more efficient and bypass the defenses. Uh, thank you, uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so, I sort of agree with one of your last comments there, that perhaps we should not put all of our uh, data and code into enclaves. Um, I agree in, the, in that maybe they should not all go into enclaves. I disagree um, in that operating system kernels really should not have access to application code and data that they do not need. So 90% of the data within an application is something the operating system kernel should not be able to access. Right? So I think the challenge is, one, so A, I think we will have to deal with the side channels in some way, shape, or form. And then B, you know, figuring out even if we don't put everything into an enclave, right, because, because the cost of side channel mitigation is too high, um, you know, how do we keep the operating system from, from accessing that data anyway? Um, which I have my own personal ideas on, but I will promote my own work here. So, just to be for thought. Thanks. Good work. Um, do you know if the next version of SGX that they're planning to release addresses any of these side channels? Um, I, I, as far as I, I know, uh, I don't think there's additional uh, protections against these side channels, including the pit-based attack. 